Hello everybody, good morning. Welcome to another Yukon Bob video. On the road this morning, uh, it was one of those mornings where I got up, had no plans of going sea doing, but uh, all of a sudden I looked at the wind, I looked at the weather conditions for the day, and I thought this is going to be a perfect day to be out on the water. So within an hour or so, I had the truck loaded up. The sea doo was already hooked up to the truck, so I just hit the road. Going to go close to home today though, because uh, it's a, you know, a trip that just came about in the last hour or so. And I'm going to head up to where I did the very first ride of the 2024 season, Lake Simcoe. It's just about an hour or so north for me. Going to launch from a point there called uh, Keswick, a little town there. There's a launch that I can get into the water there and then just head out onto Lake Simcoe and make a little exploration up the, uh, the coastline of Simcoe and show you around up there today because it's supposed to be a pretty nice day on the water. So I'll see you at Keswick in just a couple minutes. Okay, we have arrived in Keswick at uh, the boat launch. And this is the boat launch here. It's uh, pretty basic. It's uh, just a way to get into the water, really, to get out onto, out onto Lake Simcoe. It's kind of scummy here even, but uh, it'll work. It's enough to get in the water. Now there's a guy here by the name of Harry who usually looks after this ramp. He's usually around and he comes over and he collects the, uh, the $20, which is what it is here, to uh, launch and then park your vehicle. There's parking right along over here, this sort of thing. There used to be a lot of jet skis here for rent. I don't see them here right now. There is a sign up there that says something about jet ski rental. Maybe they've moved out of this location and are a little bit further down the lake, but I saw it last summer when I was here that there was like 15 or 20 of these jet skis here that they were doing rentals with, and apparently they were fairly popular and fairly busy, but they were all right in here. And I think they've maybe moved down to a little better location. I'll have to read that sign up there a little bit later. But this is where I'm launching from. It's Keswick. It's just a short ways up the road from me. Kind of a kind of a crappy launch, but it's enough to, to get into the water. And then you head out under the bridge and the, the big lake is out that way. All right, let's get stuff unloaded, get the cameras hooked up, and get the Sea-Doo in the water. Kind of scummy right in here at the launch, but it'll be better once we get out onto the, the bigger lake. So parking just up over there. And uh, oddly enough, I haven't seen Harry here to collect any money today, so I'm sure he'll be here when I get back. And I'll just see him at that point and pay him the $20, which is reasonable. I don't mind the 20 bucks. Now, it's not much of a launch or anything here, but uh, it serves the purpose. It gets you into the water. There is another little launch just on the other side over here. It's associated with the, uh, the Boston Pizza property right over here. I just want to take a little drive up to it and see whether or not that's actually usable because years ago it used to be free. Now you see they've got, they've got a chain across it there. That's actually a pretty good little launch but obviously not, not in use so you can't get in there because there's lots of parking back up over there. That used to be a really, that, that was a better launch. But obviously they don't want anybody launching out of there, so that's not going to happen. Okay, maybe we'll see Harry when we get back and we'll, we'll pay our $20, see if he's around. So you have to go under that bridge, which is uh, the road that I came across to get in here. And then you come into this marina. And there's a fairly big marina here. This is the, uh, the Pride Group Marina, so it's a fair sized marina. And then you head out through the marina and then you get out onto the bigger waters of uh, Lake Simcoe. There's our first flag to give us an indication of just what kind of wind we have today. And it is not much and it shouldn't be much for the whole day. Hey, we've got the right of way here. You guys got to go back. So that's the exit right out that way, and that's Lake Simcoe out that way. Every seagull's got a post. Well, I guess there's a few free. And I think I see another sea up here. This may be one of the sea from that sea rental place. Maybe I'll stop and ask them where they're, where they're located now. 
Because I remember the color of the Sea-Doo's, they were all those turquoise color ones. And that looks like a turquoise color sea up there. Is that one of the rentals? No. They were all that color though. Yeah, and they were back in here somewhere, but I don't see them, they seem to have moved. So don't know where they are now, but they were sort of that color. How's the lake, nice and calm? Yeah, it's beautiful. Good. That's what I thought, it would be nice and calm out there. A little spot for a sea right there on the lift. Well, the plan for today is uh, fairly simple. We're gonna cross over to the other side of this lake and head uh, north on Lake Simcoe. I'm gonna go over to uh, a little place called Lafroy Harbor, take a little poke in there and have a look around at Lafroy Harbor. Nice little area in there. And then I'm gonna come back out and head up the coastline, up past uh, a place called Innisfil, and then we're gonna head up to Friday Harbor up in that area of uh, Lake Simcoe and have a look around up there and see what's going on out there. I would imagine it's gonna be pretty quiet today uh, because it is a Monday, so. High thin overcast cast cloud that is supposed to burn off later on this afternoon and give us temperatures up around uh, 30, 32 degrees. So it's gonna be hot and warm. We've got all the sunscreen on and we'll go out and just uh, check out the lake today and see how it is because I think it's gonna be a good day on the water. Okay, I think everything is secure. The lake looks like glass. Let's go. That tree is just hanging right over the water. I've seen that a couple of times when I've been out here. I keep thinking, next time I come by, it won't be there. It'll have broken off and fallen into the water just because of all the strain there is on the branch holding it. But it always seems to be there the next year. So it's probably a lot tougher than I actually think it is. So it only took us about uh, seven, eight minutes to get across the lake. It's pretty quick when, when the conditions are like this flat, the sea dew is uh, the fastest thing on the water. When it's a little bit bouncy or choppy, it can be the slowest thing on the water. It just depends on the water conditions. So we're heading to Lafroy Harbor. It's just up over here. Give that kayaker a little bit of room. So this is the entrance to uh, Lafroy Harbor right here. Got a nice little beach area out front, a bunch of chairs. And then the harbor just goes back in there and around the corner. They've got a nice restaurant here, but I've got to admit, I haven't been into that restaurant in a couple of years. I've always just kind of come in here in the last couple of years, cruised in, cruised back out, because it's sort of at the very beginning of the trip, so I've not stopped into the restaurant here. But I have in the past, years ago, eaten in there, and it's actually pretty good. It's a nice little restaurant. You need some canvas tops for your boat. They have a place here that I hear does pretty good work for uh, canvas, for boats, replacing canvas. They've got a dealership here, or at least they used to, I think they still do, for a boat called the, uh, the Ranger Tug. Ranger Tug is one of my favorite boats. Every time I see them on the water, I tend to point them out to you guys. There's a bunch of them in my past videos. Just kind of a neat little boat that I've always kind of liked. I'd always like to have had one of those. It's not as uh, accessible as a Sea-Doo in terms of getting it in and out of the water and moving around from place to place, but yeah, I just kind of like those Ranger Tugs. I think they're built out in, uh, is it Seattle area, something like that on the West Coast? Popular boats though, people do like them. They're kind of a step down from the Nordhaven. You know, if you like the Nordhaven, you'd like the Ranger Tug. It's a, a poor man's version of the Nordhaven. <laughs>
Okay, got the Air 3 back, which is always a good thing. Uh, I tried something a little bit different this time. I was flying it out of a, a, a mode called Spotlight Mode instead of Active Track, which basically means that it keeps you in the center of the frame. Now, it doesn't fly automatically. It means you have to use the sticks on, uh, the, jo on the joystick to control its movement, but it will always keep you in the center of frame. So when you're going forward with the Sea-Doo, if you move the drone backwards and it's in front of you, it'll keep you in frame as long as you don't move too far right or left uh, and go by it, it'll lose you then. But uh, it kind of keeps you in frame. So I think that that spotlight mode might be the better way to fly the drone rather than using active track because it seems to just hold you in the center of frame a little more. Uh, you can get some shots from behind, some shots uh, from in front, and that sort of works a little better. So we're going to have to try that a little bit more with spotlight mode instead of using uh, active track. You seem to be able to get the shots a little better that way. Not a bad little spot to fly the drone from. Had it chasing me around for a little bit and then I kind of landed it right where there was some nice shallow water. Just in case it went into the water, I could always get it back. Here's just a quick look at the RC controller that I have mounted onto the sea -Doo. I use a quad lock uh, receiver and I've glued it to the back of this RC case and then it attaches to a RAM short extension and a couple of one inch ball mounts that are mounted onto the sea -Doo. I'll do another video on this some other day, just how I use all of this stuff off the sea -Doo for for running the drone. Okay, let's head a little bit further up the lake. So just before I came out here this morning on uh, the sea I was at a dermatologist this morning and that band-aid there is from a little uh, incision I had made on my arm this morning because there was this little scab of skin that had not healed in about a year. I kept putting this ointment and cream on it and stuff like that. It would get a scab on it, the scab would come off and then the, the skin would kind of go back to the way it was before, kind of this patchy thing there. So I thought after a year of it not healing, I went to a dermatologist this morning, and he said, after looking at it for just a few seconds, that is sun damage from being out in the sun a lot. And, um, you know, that could be potentially cancerous, although he didn't think it was, but he put a little needle in there, froze that area of skin, and then scraped all the top layer off and said, come back and see me in six months. I think you're gonna be absolutely fine in all of that. But it was one of those things that I just thought, you know, it hadn't healed, hadn't healed. So being out in the sun a lot, especially on the sea dew over water, I tend to keep a rash shirt on, something like this, and keep the arms pulled down, always have sunscreen on. But he said this could have happened, began, you know, 10 years ago or something like that. It wasn't just necessarily in the last couple of years. But be careful out on the water with uh, sun. It's pretty strong when it's bouncing back off the water. I'm covered in sunscreen and I usually reapply it once more throughout the day if I'm out for the whole day and usually put it on twice. But that little, uh, that little uh, scab of skin there that they worked on this morning was damaged from the sun to the skin. And uh, luckily I went in because I was kind of ignoring it for a long time thinking, why doesn't it just heal? But it wasn't healing. So that's why I finally went in and he said, yep, that's what it is. Skin damage from uh, the sun. So he scraped it off and We'll be a little more careful, keep the sleeves pulled down and stuff like that, and just see, see what happens. But if you are out in the sun, make sure you got that sunscreen on because it's important. This is another main launch to get onto uh, Lake Simcoe. This is Innisfil Beach Park. But uh, Mark Forrest was by here last week, or a couple of weeks back. He did a YouTube video. He's another sea YouTuber. And he was here. He launched from here. He said, and I couldn't believe this, but he said it cost him $75 to launch from here and to park a vehicle here for the day. That was the day rate. I think what they've got here is they've got a rate here for people who live in this area, and then they got a rate for other people. So if you don't live from here, in this area, that's what he said it cost him to get in here 
was $75. The launch is just over on that side. They've got a nice beach area up in here and that stuff. But isn't that absolutely ridiculous? And he said it was the same thing in Barrie, that if you launch from Barrie and you're a non-resident there, it will cost you $75 to launch. That's the highest I have heard anywhere in Ontario. When I was talking in a couple of videos back and ranting and raving about $40 for launch fees, thinking how high that cost, that's nothing compared to what it is here. $75. I mean, that's just, that's just stupid. Don't come here. Go somewhere else. Launch on the other side of the lake over at Keswick where I launched from. It's only $20 over there. Well, straight up the coastline, that way is where we're headed. And the next stop is going to be Friday Harbor, probably the biggest resort condo development on any water in Ontario. There's a little indication of the wind action for today just kind of hanging right down on the flagpole. Any of the water that's kind of a little bit rougher out here, that's just because of boat traffic on the lake, throwing wake out there. But you can imagine on the weekend when there's hundreds of boats out here, what it's like. There's just a little wave action out here right now. It's not all that bad, but a little bit. Okay, Friday Harbor is still ahead. And this is it, this is the entrance right here to Friday Harbor. I think this development's probably been around at least a decade now. I remember going to a presentation on this way back when they just had uh, drawings and a little map stuff set up in a presentation room. And now uh, a decade or so later, they've been on phase two and three and maybe even four of this development. It's been a big success. I think they sold most of the stuff in here and. It's uh, got a golf course, it's got a big swimming pool, it's got a rec center, it's got a beach area, it's got restaurants, it's got stores. I'll take a cruise in here and I'll just show you around what it looks like inside Friday Harbor. I've done other videos on this, but we're here, so let's go in and have a look at uh, what Friday Harbor looks like. I just saw a bunch of guys, by the way, I saw Greg from the Sea-Doo Tours Riding Group. He was up on the dock standing there waving at me. I wasn't sure who that was for a minute, but they're all showing up here for lunch. So I guess I've got a, I guess I got a lunch date here. But where am I gonna tie up? Those all say reserved in there. This is a rock wall, that would be no good. There is a cleat right over there, but do I have to walk all the way around? I could tie up to that cleat up here sideways. Yeah, let me get up here and see if this might be a spot and I can walk around the boardwalk. Okay, I think this spot will will work. It doesn't say reserve. There is a cleat for me to tie up. And then I just have to walk kind of back and around to get off. Well, I did bring a bologna sandwich, but I guess I won't be eating that. I guess I'll be having a more expensive lunch today. I had no idea those guys were going to be here. I just saw this guy waving at me from the shore. What is he doing? Is he thinking that I'm parked somewhere wrong? Or then I didn't realize it was it was Greg. So this is the boardwalk at Friday Harbor, and uh, there's a whole other development going in back there. They just seem to always be expanding here and building on and on and on. But they've got a lot of uh, a lot of things going on here. It's a pretty attractive area, and it's been a pretty positive development. A lot of people seem to really like this area. Gelato ice cream shop. Now I didn't exactly see where he went to. It's somewhere right up here. The Marine Gastro Pub. Oh, it's nice and cool in here. This is perfect. Looks like they've got a nice cool refreshment here. So I didn't get the memo about lunch, by the way. 
Jesus. Check your phone. I left a message. Did you? Okay. Okay, I, I did get a message about it. <laughs> well, it turned out not to be bologna sandwiches off the Sea-Doo today. I ran into the Sea-Doo Tours riding group right here at Friday Harbor. Greg was standing on the dock yelling at me to come on over. What a coincidence. Hey, guys. Good to see you all. Oh, yeah. Good to see you too. Too bad you don't have sea doos. You could come for a ride with me. Let me know how that uh, fried bologna sandwich tastes, Bob. I want to know. So they're heading back in their vehicles. I'm heading back on the water. Well, that was literally amazing. If he'd been five seconds or ten seconds earlier or later, uh, either way, from me pulling in with my sea doo here to Friday Harbor, we'd have missed each other, and uh, they'd have been having lunch here, and I'd never known. So that was kind of weird. See from the dock here. You can see how much the, the weeds are infiltrating this entire area in here because the water's so still in here that the weeds are just constantly growing in here. Now this vessel I haven't seen before. I don't know if this is owned by Friday Harbor. This is a fairly big boat. Looks like a boat for touring around out on uh, Lake Simcoe, taking people around maybe on dinner cruises or something like that. I have not seen this here in the past, Encore. So I'm not sure what the story on this is, whether it's privately owned or whether it's owned by somebody uh, here uh, with, the, with the property development. Looks like a fairly big craft though. They're even carrying their own sea doos on the back of this. Is this owned by uh, Friday Harbor? It is owned by Friday Harbor. What do you do with it? Is it evening cruises or? Yep, cruises? Yeah, so they do cruises off of here, that sort of thing. And I'm kind of in their way, so I'll pull out of their way. But I haven't seen it. How, long, how new is it? How new? Nah, she can't hear me. I haven't seen it here before, so I think it, is, uh, I think it is pretty new. Okay, so much for Friday Harbor. Let's head out. Are those rentals, guys? Yes, rentals. Out of Keswick? Yes. Yeah. So those are the rentals right there. A couple of them there, three on each. Hi guys. And, and they're out of uh, Keswick. I just don't know where they're located now. Must be a little bit further down that little inlet that I was in when I started out. Uh, and I just didn't maybe go far enough back to look, but that's where they're out of. Good control. Is that a, that's a spark? Yeah, it's tricks, spark tricks. I love the paint job on that. Yeah, we've, uh, we've, we customized the lab and pulled the stage three too, definitely. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Do a, do a couple more things around here. Uh, yeah, do a couple power slides and stuff. We're looking for big waves. Yeah, we won't find those today. Yeah. <laughs> They put some practice in on these. Look at this. These guys are really good. If you don't have waves on the lake naturally, you come out here and you whip around like this and you make your own and do your own jumps and stuff.
It's a strange sky today. It sort of looks like it wants to rain and then looks like it's clearing up and then some dark stuff over there. Whatever it is though, it's not gonna be a lot of rain today. It might be a little sprinkle going by, but that's about it. Well, I'm just about back at the spot that I launched from. So I think we're gonna call it good for this Yukon Bob video. Uh, just a, a fast day out on Lake Simcoe. Got up this morning, decided the weather conditions and everything look right. Let's get out on the lake today and go for a quick little ride. So this is my second time on this lake this year. The very first ride I did of the season was out here and uh, it turned out to be a pretty nice day today out here. So thanks very much guys for coming along on this Yukon Bob video. Just a quick ride on Lake Simcoe today up to uh, Friday Harbor and coincidentally met up with the sea Dew Tours riding group guys and ended up having lunch with them up there totally by accident. I had no idea they were there, but that turned out to be a bit of a nice surprise, so that was good. We'll see you guys shortly out on the water on another lake, another river, somewhere around southern Ontario. Till then, stay safe on the water wherever you may be, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.